Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we're doing part two of installment 4000 of fixing Mega Tank. So if you watch the last video, there'll be a link up there. I found why it was leaking. We skirted around some health and safety issues and sorted out the framing. I've resealed it all and now uh, it's time to refill it. But before I refill it, I'm going to have a play around with the scape. I'm going to add a lot more rocks and hardscape in there. I've rearranged some of the wood. I want to put a lot more sand in there. So we have a few buckets of sand to clean before we get ready to fill. So this is actually a question I've asked a bunch of times. Is how do you clean sand? Um, and I have made videos in the past saying you don't need to. You can just filter it out. But I am using play sand here. So the stuff that you can get, kind of five pound a bag from Argos or B&Q. Um, and it's really dusty and it just takes a while before you get clear water. So four or five scoops in a bucket like so. And then my technique is just basically get a hose and rinse it. And that's usually the first question is how do you rinse it? What do you mean by rinse? Well, this basically. So you get your hose in there on one of the jet settings, stir up the sand. And what that does is lets all the gunk and dust and stuff rise to the top. And initially you'll get this frothy stuff here and just let it overflow. So the sand should be heavy enough to stay to the bottom. That's why you don't fill your bucket too much. And then when the bucket starts to overflow, all the frothy stuff goes away. You can encourage it and stuff. And then you get this. So I can't see the sand because it's still too dusty. So I'm just going to run it for a bit longer, basically waiting for it to clear. And the trick is knowing when it's clear. Um, and what I like to use is the fact that I can see the sand bubbling underneath in the bucket because the amount of the dust has run off. See, so you can see the sand, start to see the sand bubbling up to the top. This is a video that's a bit like watching paint dry. I'm sure nobody needs to know this. You all know how to wash sand, but for those three people that don't, Hopefully this helps. So in general, it takes two or three minutes, in my experience, for a bucket this size. And what you're avoiding is when you add it to the tank. If you add it to a tank with water, you get cloudy water for days. Um, or if you add it to the tank and then you add water later, you get cloudy water for days. This way, you can add it any way you want. And it just goes straight to the bottom, clear as a bell. Ugh. Except when your hose pops off. So then generally this is what I'm looking for. I can see the, back, the sand bubbling up underneath and if I take the hose away, it all just settles and it's clear water on top. And we're good to go. That can go in the tank now. There's a couple of the guys in their temporary home. We've got the giant snake head and the giant Grammy in here. This is the five foot by two foot by two foot tank. So they've been in here about a week. All looking good, and no problems there. But yeah, want to get them back in their big tank so far, as soon as possible. So let's get on with filling it. I've had people asking me how I do water changes on Mega Tank. This is effectively a larger version of my HMA filter. It's basically a carbon block filter. I can run that in there at much higher volumes, much higher capacity. Um, so I use that to refill Mega Tank when I'm doing water changes. And there we go, as if by magic, it is now full of water again. Obviously, it's been about a week. I got a little bit bored and frustrated and various things happened. So just to talk you through it, the leak was coming from the seal from the inside on here. What I did was reinforce the front frame with lots of extra screws. Now I know nails have a greater shearing force, but I don't, I'm not really interested in shearing. I'm interested in stopping movement. So you saw in the last video that I put in these big, big screws that can hold this firmly in place. I then re-fiberglassed, re-rubbered, re re-everythinged, let it all dry. And each time you do that, you need to leave it a couple of days for each thing. So it took about a week to get to this phase. Now I've filled it up again. This is the new scape, um, we'll show you that a little bit more when we get the, the fish in. But it's been running for a few days to get up to temperature, it is now up to temperature, so it's time to get some fish back in. 
First up, because he's the first one I caught, is the giant Garami. So I've temperature matched everything. Everything's on the same water, so we should be okay. Let him in and have a look around. And only a mild soaking with the Garami. So next will be the snakehead. Here's Gordon, the giant emperor snakehead, who gave me more than a mild soaking. There you go, Gordon. Enjoy your new setup. Next, the smaller Oscar. Wow, thank you for that. Oh, God. Bigger Oscar. Okay, the Oscar's making me the wettest. With the biggest soaking. Severum. And then just the silver dollars. So there we go, all the fish returned to Mega Tank, happy and healthy, exploring their new conditions, their new aquascape. What we've done here is this wood monstrosity, I, I rebuilt that just to make it a little bit taller, a little bit bigger with more swim throughs, places for the smaller fish to go in and hide away if they want to do so. And so the Severum and the smaller Oscar already doing that, as well as the giant Grammy at the back there. And then over to this side, I've kind of made this rock structure and that bit right here. It's actually a tunnel, so I thought that would make a quite nice hide for Gordon. When he gets a bit fed up, he can go in there and chill out for a little bit. Make sure that the kids aren't bothering him too much. So, for now, we seem to be pretty good. I do in time want to get more fish. I'd like to get quite a big school of the silver dollars. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to keep it like this for a few weeks. I've currently got tank space to house all these fish should something else go wrong. Mega Tank does have a habit of if it's going to break, it waits until I've declared it fixed before actually breaking. So we'll let them have a few weeks in here, chilling out with loads of space. What do you think, Gordon? Is that alright for you? But ultimately I do want to add more fish to this, this is an 8 foot by 4 foot by 3 foot tank. It has the capacity for some more fish. I'm not wanting to overload it or anything, but as always, fish keepers always want more fish. So, hopefully they'll be nice and happy. They've effectively just had a 100% water change, so they should be good with that. Um, the smaller Oscar's coming along quite well. He's catching up quickly to the big one. So that's us done for this time anyway. So until we see water on the floor down there next time, Mega Tank is currently holding water. I think I've come to the realization, somebody else put it in the comments, that it's going to be a tank that requires maintenance. So I'm going to look at it as maintenance. It's a learning process. The next time I build a mega tank, it might never leak at all. But for now, this is what I've got and this is what I'm using. Thank you very much for joining me and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.